Welcome back, guys. So today uh, we are going to continue the <clears throat> the security in the securing of our uh, APIs uh, using the AWS Cognito. Uh, yesterday uh, we finished up to the point where we build the Lambda function and we link it back with the API gateway, and we also <clears throat> uh, configure the AWS Cognito uh, to make sure that we have uh, all the information that we need to integrate it back with, with the uh, API Gateway. So today we're gonna continue our journey. Let me quickly go back to my slide and let me... Just stop, okay, yeah. So that, that's the slide. So we have finished this part. We have uh, built this part as well. Uh, and we can see the, uh, the API gateway is able to respond the calls initiated by the user. And we also independently configure Cognito uh, to, to issue the JWT token. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna now continue our journey and we are going to now integrate our API gateway with AWS Cognito in this video. So by saying it, uh, let me just jump back uh, on, I just, you know, yeah, I think that's, that's better. So in API Gateway, uh, you can see we have configured the route uh, and that route is more like, you know, attaching the, the Lambda function uh, to, to our, uh, our uh, uh, API. Uh, so it's uh, the Lambda function is exposed through the, 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 uh, through the API Gateway. And you can see uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have it working. So there's no issue in it. Let me just hide the control. And now let me quickly show you just for a reminder, you can see I have the API URL, which I'm invoking and it is returning me the, the factorial, uh, which is a calc uh, statistical function that I build uh, in that Lambda function. And I'm uh, able to get the result back through that function, uh, which is obviously coming through the, the API. Now, the, as a next step, uh, because now I have the user pool configured and that's what we have seen uh, yesterday. That was the last thing we have did. And for this one, uh, one particular uh, 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 point, we configure it using the client ID and client credential, uh, which doesn't require any username and password. All we need to pass the client ID and client credential, and it will issue the JWT token for us to authenticate our request uh, 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 against the, the API gateway. API internally validate that token, uh, through the Cognito, and if the token is valid, it will uh, allow us to communicate with with the with the Lambda function, which is more like uh, returning us the value. So now let's uh, see it in action. So what I'm gonna do, uh, let me quickly jump to the authorization part. And now you can see we have an option that we can create or attach an uh, authorizer. So let me hit that, and I'm going to use the JWT authorizer, yeah. So there's going to be, let me just get the same name in here. Yeah. Authorizer and identity source. So once we send a request, uh, that request or header dot authorization, let API uh, know that where it's going to find the the JWT token. So if I'm uh, keeping the request dot header dot authorization, so that means once I make a call later on using the Postman or even uh, passing it through through the Python function. I just need to make sure uh, the 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 JWT token is part of the header of of that request. We're gonna see it in a moment. And then the the most important thing that we need is to put the issuer URL. Uh, uh, pay uh, uh, close attention how we're going to develop that URL because that, that's the key to understand how it's going to integrate with, with, the, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the Cognito. So generally the issuer URL is in this format. Let me quickly bring it uh, on my screen. I've already, Let's see if I can. I can get it in, in here. 
So how we build that uh, issuer uh, URL? So up to this point, uh, everything remained constant. And uh, 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 like you can see, after cognito-idp, uh, which is more like uh, the the uh, the system which is, which will issue the 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 token, uh, that that's the uh, the part of that URL. Then we have the uh, the uh, <clears throat> we have the uh, uh, the region in which our API sits, and then at the end of the uh, and the at, at the end of it, we have the the user pool that has been created. So if I quickly move it away, and let me quickly go back, so you can see our user pool ID. Always remember, you know that user pool ID which we have copied last time. So that's going to be part of that issuer URL that we're going to put in here. Remember, so we need two things. Obviously, one is the region where we are, uh, where we are uh, 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 keeping our API gateway or where uh, uh, the the cognito sits, right? That uh, region we need, as well as we need the the user pool, uh, which will uh, return once you create the 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 user pool within the cognito. So we need that obviously, and one more thing we need it. So you can see. Let me copy that because ARN also have that information. So I will put it in the in the ARN. <clears throat> and another thing that we need for that is the client uh, ID. So you can see I have that client ID. By the way, I think I copied it yesterday, but anyway, that's fine if I didn't. What I'll do, let me just go in. And let me copy that client ID as well. So I have copied the client ID. Let me just put the notes in, in here. So just for the simplicity, I copy the uh, client ID. That's my, it's going to be my issuer of the JWT token. And I'll show you how it's going to embed in the, in the JWT token uh, in a moment. And I also need the, client secret because I need that to, to generate the, to generate the JWT token. So let me put the client secret as well. Okay, so all these bits are now ready for me to, to build the build the issuer for, for uh, integrating uh, Cognito with uh, API Gateway. Let me, uh copy that part because that's something i need so if i just replace it and like you can see i have the us dash east one so what i'll do i'm just going to copy us east one in here and now that's going to be my uh legitimate uh, issuer url right so we need to build that remember that the first part up to, uh, up to cognito dash idp is gonna remain static and then you have your uh, region name dot amazon aws.com and then obviously we have the the client id and if you uh, sorry user pool id which i've just copied from from the cognito pool so let me put that back into my api gateway and now i need one more thing which is audience that ref, uh, refer back to my client id that is part of the the user pool once we create it created the the client uh, uh, app for us so that client id is going to uh, use in here so let me click add and i'm going to put my client id in here And that's it. So we have the UR, uh, issuer URL. We have the audience, which is in uh, which indirectly referred to the client ID. So you can see that uh, it's already mentioned in the text that enter the client ID. And if now, if I create and attach, now my get request is now secure with the JWT authentication. Once you see that label in front of your get request, that means now we are unable to access the, the API without uh, providing the JWT token, right? And in order to prove that, let me just come in here. And if you remember, remember this screen, you will have the, the, the result coming back. And just for your uh, refresher, let me go back in here and let me just test my function. 
you can see we have 5040 it's the same result as of this one but now what i'm going to do i'm going to change it to one more let me change the function sorry the value to eight let me deploy it yeah and let me test it so we can see it's 40320 and previously i was able to get the similar result in here but now it's going to be unauthorized and the reason behind it because now our api is secure with the jwt uh, token so it won't allow us to to access or make that api call until unless we provide the 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 uh, the jwt token as part of uh, our our request so that, that that's uh, a good thing that we have uh, secure our api uh, using the jwt token so that uh, a part is take now the next big question that how we are going to uh, how we are going to now access the same API uh, using the, the JWT token. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you first how we, we can do it using the Postman. And in the in the later video, we will do the same thing using the lamb another Lambda function as well as the, the Python environment, right? So three different environment, like I mentioned in my article, we're going we're gonna to see all three uh, 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 demo uh, 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 respectively. So hopefully that that makes any sense. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, and now our architecture is fully completed. We have secured our uh, Lambda function uh, through the API, and API is further secure uh, using the uh, uh, JWT token, right? So uh, if you have any question, please feel free to put in comments. More than happy to answer. I believe you like it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.